Today we've got a great story of revenge using somebody else's login to their streaming service. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, forced a racist transphobe to listen to pro-trans and ways to decolonize your mind TikToks for 30 minutes. I was at work today waiting for someone who has said incredibly racist and transphobic things for years around me to finish his job so I could finish mine. I had nothing to do, so I turned my phone volume to 11 and watched 5 minute clips about trans rights, the former president's ongoing legal woes, and how to decolonize your mind, and how to decolonize your mind until he was done doing his work. I know he could hear it because he was muttering angrily the whole time. Before anyone asks, there is no HR at this job and I will not get into any trouble for watching TikTok at work. I mean, that's all fine and dandy until they start blasting the kind of stuff they like to watch back at you that you don't necessarily want to watch. I mean, you're almost kind of giving the playbook on how to get revenge against you away to them with just a classic fight fire with fire kind of thing. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy awesome stories of revenge, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is Petty Revenge Against My Ex. So my boyfriend and I recently broke up, but I'm still living at his house for the meantime. The reason we broke up after two years is I found out he was cheating on me the entire two years, kissing girls and trying to hire escorts while away on a three-week vacation last year with his cousin, getting numbers of girls in my local small town, telling people we're in an open relationship, which I wanted to have at the beginning of our relationship but he was uncomfortable with that, and let's not forget all the OnlyFans girls he added on Snapchat was messaging the grossest, slimiest, insecure crap I have ever seen trying to get girls off his snap to meet him at hotels at his work trips. Spent almost $1300 on these girls but was always frugal with me, claiming girlfriends are expensive when he makes $150,000 a year and I make under $50,000. I paid for a lot of furniture for our home and paid for myself a fair share or both of us out on dates. He is currently away on a vacation with his brother for a week. He left two days ago and I found out about all this crap within the last week before he left. He will also be going on another trip with his brother for the last two weeks of this month. My petty revenge is leaving every single light on in his house all day while he's gone and before I move. I have even left the sink dripping for a few hours every day. It's a small revenge, but dang, this cheap freaker can pay extra in utilities next month. Are there any other ideas of small things you can do that would be very annoying but they may not even be able to recognize it? I saw some things like taking some of the screws out of furniture so it might be a little bit more liable to fall apart later on when they're using it and don't realize it. Maybe tuck something away in the very, very back or bottom of the freezer or fridge. Make sure the thermostat is turned way down or way up. You know, the good stuff. Our next story is $800 car turns into $3,000 in tickets. This has been a favorite story among my friend group over the last few years, so I figured I'd share it here. From 2018 to 2022, I, 25 year old male, was a consistently broke pizza delivery guy. My common method for vehicles was to buy cars for less than $1,000, do minor repairs, and drive them for three to six months until they exploded. I'd make 10 times on the car and would wash, repeat, did this probably seven or eight times over the years. The only time I ever got burned was buying a 98 Civic Coupe. I remember I was a little extra broke but needed a car for work that week, and Civics and Corollas were or are the easiest and cheapest for me to work on. I texted him and drove to Felony Flats in Portland, red flag one, and was greeted by a man with a gold grill, red flag two, who didn't speak much English, which wasn't helped by my poor Spanish. The car itself was pretty beat up cosmetically but ran perfectly, so I gave him the $800 and headed to work. This is where the freakery begins. The next day I head to the DOL to register the car, only to realize that the title was voided due to the car being in a wreck, so I wouldn't be able to register till I got the proper title. Annoying, but I figured he made an innocent mistake. I call him and leave a message saying there's issues with the title, and he doesn't respond. I call 100 plus times over the next two weeks to get it figured out, but he keeps ignoring me, and at this point I figure I've been had. I move the car to the public street to deal with another day. One morning I come out to find tickets for no registration and no insurance left on the car, $150 to $200 between the two, and a tow warning. At first I was enraged until it dawned on me that the car wasn't in my name. 
and those tickets weren't mine to deal with, so I made a plan. Every few days, the car would get re-ticketed and tagged for towing. I would come out, place the tickets on the driver's seat, move the car by a few feet, and erase the tow warnings. After two-ish months, I'd racked up about $2,000 in tickets on this car, not in my name. One day, I get a frantic call from who do you guess? The man who sold me the car, who also miraculously learned perfect English, telling me he was getting calls from the city and begging me to not let them tow it. I think at this point he realized what I was doing and that he would get me the title that week, and that the delay was because he and his wife were in a nasty divorce and she had the current title. I simply responded, what car? And hung up on him. As I was leaving my apartment, I saw the cops there getting ready to load it on the tow truck and decided to let it go in case the former owner came looking for it. Ultimately, I never got my $800 back, but he got $2,000 in tickets, $4,000 if they went 30 plus days unpaid, a $1,000 tow bill, and if the story about his divorce was true, a super ticked ex-wife because the car was still in her name too. Can't put a price on that. I never heard from him or the city about the car. My only regret was not driving it to an empty parking lot and leaving it in a handicapped spot, but I didn't want to risk being seen on cameras. Hope you enjoyed. So at this point, my question would be, what happens if he reports it as stolen? If he finds out that it's been towed, or honestly that this person wasn't willing to help them out? I mean, as soon as they said, what car? Should they not have turned around and tried to play that card of, my car that I have the title to has been stolen. All these tickets weren't even mine to begin with. This next story is, be nice to your tenants. This happened to my husband. My husband was raised Amish. He left that community in his early 20s and was greeted by many harsh realities of the real world. He did not know his rights or how to stand up for himself. He was renting a house without fully understanding how rent worked. Specifically, he didn't know it's understood to be due on the first of the month unless stated otherwise. He ended up needing a one-week grace period, but instead the landlord flipped his crap and kicked him out. My husband was ticked, so we reported the house to the housing authority for water damage in the upstairs ceiling. Specifically, he cited black mold. The housing authority condemned the residence until repairs could be done. The landlord couldn't afford it and had to sell the house. Honestly, for the safety of the person who owned the place and whoever may rent out that place again in the future, OP's husband did them a service. You don't just play around and waffle and hope the tenants don't complain too much about the black mold in the house. I mean, if anything, thank God the landlord kicked OP's husband out, saved them from probably some long-term health issues. Our next story is, good luck finding the deceased patient. So this happened when I was a physician resident many years ago when cameras were not that popular in many hospitals, including mine. Patient transporters in my hospital were the worst people you could ever meet. Employed by the government, extremely rude with residents, sexually harassing female doctors, and many, many, many times leaving you alone when you needed a stat CT for a neurosurgical patient. I had many cases when I called 10 times and waited for more than an hour at 3 a.m. with a dying patient because they were watching a movie, but they were the first asking for free prescriptions. I absolutely hated them. On a Sunday, I was almost a chief resident and I was charting near the ICU when I see two of them bringing a dead body covered in a stretcher and leaving it in the hallway in the front door of the cardiovascular ICU. So they left the deceased patient there because they had to do other stuff before transporting to the morgue. This is obviously unacceptable because it is a major hallway and you should treat the situation with respect. Sunday 3pm, the hallway was completely empty. So as a revenge for years of abuse, I pushed the stretcher with the deceased patient to a remote hallway after two doors that was never used. I walked as fast as I could to go back to my seat, 30 feet from them behind a glass because I knew that if they saw me, they could literally kill me. I continue with my paperwork in the CV ICU, and I see them exiting the ICU and start looking at each other while panicking because they had lost a dead body. They couldn't tell anyone because it is absolutely unacceptable to leave that in the hallway alone just because you're lazy, so this would be reported to the hospital leadership. They started talking and cussing and no one was there, so they were truly freaking out not knowing if the deceased patient was stolen or came back to life and left. I was able to see them from a glass door in the cardiovascular ICU while doing my best impression of a tired resident trying to finish a pile of charts. 
I could see them running and sweating while I was laughing in my interior and enjoying the sweet revenge. After 15 to 20 minutes, which obviously felt as 4 hours, they found the patient. I completed my charts and finished my Sunday with a big smile on my face. By the way, I was not going to leave the body there. I was going to wait until they could find it. If you're doing something like transporting a dead body, you probably shouldn't just park it off to the side for a minute while you go off to the vending machine or whatever it is they're doing. I think OP was only trying to give them a good learning lesson. Our next story is Payback Against a Bully. This is a story my dad told me for years since I was very young, so I can recount the details pretty well. Okay, so this is like back in the 80s when he was in school. My dad every day would bring a chocolate bar to school, usually always had it on his desk or in his bag. He had this bully that would always come up to him in class at his desk to mock and tease him and always take his chocolate bar. My dad was pretty scrawny and he couldn't really defend himself against this bigger guy, so he would always end up taking it. Anyways, one day my dad had enough. He went to the pharmacy after school and bought a bar of X-Lax, which if you didn't know, is a laxative in the form of a chocolate bar. He went home and then proceeded to melt the imprinted X-Lax logo off the bar and heat seal it inside his usual chocolate bar wrapper. Next thing tomorrow morning at school, he left this laxative bar on his desk and just like routine, the bully took it. Next day after that, he was completely absent for the day. Finally, the day after that, my dad gets called down to the office and the kid is sitting there with his parents and they're super upset because apparently he was literally on the toilet all day and felt really sick like vomiting and stuff. You are usually supposed to take like one of the squares and I've had them, it makes you go instantly. So the fact that he ate the whole bar? In the end, my dad didn't get in trouble as he explained the kid had stolen it. There was nothing they could really do since he did make the active choice to take it. In the end, that bully never touched my dad's chocolate or even bothered him again. I think definitely the reason why they never messed with OP's father again is because the first time they gave them a laxative. If they started with that, who knows what it could be next time if they want to keep trying to play that game. And hopefully, if anything, they taught this guy to be afraid of just taking random strangers food. Our next story is a delivery driver's petty revenge story. This happened to me last year. Someone reminded me of it today, so I thought I would share. I was working as a grocery shopper and delivery guy. You probably know the app. I did a double order about 24 hours after a snowstorm was over. Most people have their driveways shoveled by now. Order A of the double was 5 items going to the trailer park 3 miles away. Order B was 20 items going 10 miles away. I've shopped for B a few times, so I knew they were the good tipper. I get done shopping and drive to customer A. Driveway not shoveled and it's a hand to customer. Freak my life. So I park on the road and trudge through the nearly a foot of snow to the front door and I knock. A woman in her late 20s, early 30s answers the door. I hand her the two bags and say, have a nice day. She stops me from leaving and proceeds to tell me that the tip she left me on the app was so I would shovel her driveway. Before I could say anything, she pointed to the shovel, says, get started or I'll remove the tip and closes the door. Her driveway is about big enough to fit two cars. I stood there kind of dumbfounded by the audacity and entitlement of this woman. Then I remembered who I was delivering to for order B, and instantly I knew that this person, customer A, was a low tipper. Possibly no tip. So I took the shovel and pretended like I was going to do it. I then went to the side of the trailer and behind her car where I was out of view, and proceeded to write in big yellow letters, FREAK YOU, and I left the shovel next to it. As I'm driving away, I messaged her, Sorry, I can't shovel your driveway. I have another delivery to make. I left the shovel behind your car. She never messaged me back, didn't give me a bad review, and didn't take the tip away. So maybe she didn't see it, but I'm fully satisfied believing she did. If you're wondering how much the tip was for all that shoveling she wanted me to do, $5. Man, if I were an OP situation and they said, listen, you gotta shovel the driveway or I'm not giving you that tip, I would just be like, you know what, screw it, it's not worth it, enjoy your freaking groceries. If I ever see your name pop up again, I'm just gonna cancel it. Our next story is Revenge in High School. I, male, made a best friend, male, on my first day of first grade. We were inseparable, did everything together, we lived in an apartment building and he lived down the hall. He tagged along with my family and spent every day after school and on weekends at my place. 
He had a younger sister and he liked to play with her Barbies, caught him doing it many times, but I never said anything, kept it a secret. Around age 9, his parents bought a home in a nicer neighborhood, a big step up from where we were living. They had a pool in the new house. That summer before school started, he had a pool party for everyone in our class but me. It stung. Then when school started, he began trying to torment me, speaking crap about my family and me. I couldn't understand why he was acting this way. When we got into high school, he tried the same crap with my new friend group. One day, he began being a butt towards me in the cafeteria during lunch while I was with my new posse, and when he went to the restroom, I told my new friends about how this guy used to play with Barbies. His cousin was in my new friend group and backed my story. I guess his cousin didn't like him either. When this former best friend came back, one guy in the new friend group said that it would be weird if anyone we knew ever played with dolls. Well, this old friend lost his crap at me, shrieking at the top of his lungs, questioning how I could possibly spread lies like that about him, and scurried away. The new friend group said this old friend proved my story to be true by his reaction. I never understood why this guy turned on me that way when we were nine. It was my first experience at being inexplicably betrayed. However, payback is a real bench, and revenge was sweet because he was ostracized all throughout high school. I never felt remorse. We never spoke again. This story just kind of makes me feel a bit sad. I mean, it just makes me think of like the fox and the hound, how like people grow up and they just fall out of being friends, how OP was treated, but also that this guy was totally outcasted over something that people are just overly judgmental about for no great reason other than they just think it's weird. Our next story is, my sister's dogs keep me up, so my cats keep her up. My sister has two dogs. I don't know if she follows the sub or if she even uses Reddit, so I won't disclose the breeds, but they're big dogs. Jim. Anyway, they bark. At any and all movement. Joggers, cars, the garbage truck, rabbits, squirrels, you name it, they bark at it. Sometimes they bark for no reason. Sometimes they're just participating in the twilight bark, which is a real thing, as dog owners know. I've tried talking to them about it. I've tried getting the dogs to calm down on my own, but they've had no training. They live outside in a fenced-in backyard with an insulated doghouse full of hay. They have not been inside a house in several years. I worry about neglect sometimes, but that's a different issue I can do nothing about. Anyway, I have two cats. We live on different floors of a house. One of them is super loud when her food does not come exactly right on time. Anyway, their auto feeder ran out this morning, or during last night's feeding, they get fed three times a day, and I didn't realize it, so she's missed one meal and is meowing constantly. I could go placate her and give her a few morsels from my fridge or something, but I'm not gonna because my sister's dogs keep me awake so she can suck it. That's the petty part, though I worry it comes off like I'm starving her. I'm not starving my cat, I promise. If you saw her, you would think I was overfeeding her. She is a hoarder and she steals the other cat's food when I'm not looking. She's like 14 pounds. Store doesn't open up for pet food until 9, so she doesn't have long to wait. Don't worry. Anyway, I put in headphones to ignore the meowing. Hope it keeps my sister awake. It's 5 a.m. I heard her get up and use the bathroom, so I know she's awake when she's not usually awake. Success? Oh, I don't blame OP one bit because some cats, when they are hungry, they are demanding. Or shoot, they might not even really be hungry, but they want food. Especially if you are within eyesight, they will just keep going on and on. I've heard some cats who literally get to the point of nearly screaming. After a while, it starts sounding like life or death. Meanwhile, they're sitting there looking pudgy as ever. Our next story is how I destroyed a corrupt company. First, I must say that the story takes place in a very corrupt country where mass protests regularly occur. Second, I must not reveal too many details, but they're not so relevant to the story. I'm an IT guy who worked for a state-owned company. That company had three factories. I can't say what the company did because it was the only state-owned company that did it, so I would be easily identified. I had a boss, let's call him Bogdan, who really loved our government. Maybe because that's how he got this job. And it was clear when he tried to force us all to vote for them by giving us pre-filled ballots. I used it to wipe my butt and found a new ballot and attend rallies for our great leader. I refused to go and didn't get some privileges like some others did. If you wonder why I didn't quit, the job was peaceful. And since I'm an introvert and making good money, I could endure Bogdan yelling at me once every two weeks. 
One day, after tragic events in our country, protests against the government started, which I also attended. By chance, I passed a group of journalists, which was a miracle because there were at least 20,000 people. Some colleague of Bogdan reported it to him, wanting to get rid of me, and he called to scold me after two days. You represent this company and you must not appear at political protests. I replied, you can't control what I do outside of work. He said, it'll look bad with our clients. If I catch you at a political protest again, I'll fire you and make sure you can't find a job. I said, okay, as you say. It took me two days to find a job at another company. At the next protest, I deliberately passed by four different journalists. And of course, Bogdan saw me. He told me, I warned you, you're fired. No state-owned company will hire you. I said, okay, I'm leaving then. He said, even if you apply to a private company, we'll cut off their clients until they fire you. In short, state-owned companies will stop doing business with them. They often do that in our country, but mainly with small companies. I said, okay, call company name. Context, that company is one of the largest companies in our region and has offices worldwide. If you manage to convince them to fire me for attending the protest voluntarily, I'll happily become homeless. I left and took everything I owned. Oh, did I mention that the program the whole company was working on was mine? Bogdan was forced to stop using my code. Without my code, the company started to fall apart and would have gone bankrupt if it weren't for corruption, but they saved it and turned it into something else. Bogdan called me and said he was fired because of me, and I told him to go to heck. Here I am in a new company with 100% of the salary from my previous job. Just for fun, I looked through the comments on this post and the top reply was already, it's Serbia. I guess the whole political protests, using Bogdan as the name, it became a lot easier just to try to narrow down what it is, although they were trying to be secretive about it. If they wanted to keep it really vague, they should have said like the boss was James or something, and they went on strike or something. Our next story is, hurt my friends and keep using my passwords? I was going to go anon, but I would actually love to confront this person IRL. I'll try to keep this story short, so just know this person did a lot of messed up crap to me and my friend group. So I was friends with this person for a few years, and inevitably my friends became their friends. We were close, spent holidays together, milestones, celebrations, etc. They started dating a close friend of mine, which made me wary, but I told them both I wasn't choosing sides if they broke up, and wished them luck. Well, it blew up. They were caught cheating and didn't like it. To cover their tracks, they tried to turn a bunch of us against one another, and it didn't work. It turns out they actually tried to turn everyone against me before the breakup. It just didn't work. Apparently they were jealous, though to be honest, I'm not even sure what happened. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I have this friend so much emotional labor, and it amounted to nothing. Everything was fine in the end. No love lost over them departing our friend group. I realized a few months later they were still signed into and using my Paramount Plus. I thought it must be a fluke, so I logged them out. I checked the next day or so, and they logged back in. Again, maybe a fluke, so I logged them out again just to see. Lo and behold, they logged in again. And so my plan was hatched. I teach pop culture and film sometimes, so I log in and out pretty regularly. I logged them out nearly every day. I taught five days a week just to inconvenience them and because I thought it was wild that they kept using it. But the thing is, they're a huge Star Trek nerd. I did this pretty regularly until the new season of Star Trek Discovery came out, which they loved so much they had two pets named after characters, then changed the password. Honestly, it's my magnum opus of petty. Not sure I'll ever beat it. Yeah, I mean, you could change the password and just be done with it, but that would take away the fun of knowing that they have to log back in every single time. It would be especially fun if you caught them while they're like in between watching episodes. They get to the end of one episode and it automatically logs them out because they can't move on to the next episode without signing back in. You just keep hitting them with it over and over. Our next story is Childhood Crappy Revenge. Okay, so for context, autistic 7-year-old me wasn't liked by my friend's parents, as was seen as that weird friend. Also, it was back when it was more common to not be as accepting than it is in 2024, but here's a petty story I remember. My friend invited me over one weekend and she was with her other friend as well, who was being treated better by said parents. And even being 7 years old, I noticed it. When it came to leaving after dinner, friend asked her parents if we could stop the night, sleep over, 
The mother looked at me and then said, only one friend can stay, meaning the other friend, and my parents were due to pick me up. I needed the toilet before my parents turned up, so I did a massive poo in their toilet and left it. The mother went to the bathroom and afterwards went downstairs and I heard her whisper to her daughter, someone didn't flush and that's disgusting. I left with my parents with the smuggest smile on my face, and I will never forget that petty revenge. Also, that disgusting meme came out years later and it makes me chuckle for that very reason. Disgusting! That little meme clip lives rent free in my mind. Well, it was freaking one of yous! Our next story is spiking, not actually, it was salt, Ben's juice. So Ben is my classmate and he always takes my juice bottle. The school gives one to each student. I don't drink mine straight away so I put mine in my locker, but he always nicks it from there. No locks on the lockers allowed. To be honest, I don't mind, but the problem is that he messes up my neat, clean, organized locker trying to look for my juice. Knocks my books over. Anyway, on Tuesday, I got some salt from the cafeteria and put it in the bottle. By that I mean not too much, like a teaspoon of it. I shook it up and a few minutes later, caught Ben chugging my juice and then spitting it out on the floor. He got a detention by the form teacher and has to clean up his mess. By the way, he stopped nicking my juice now. Kind of the same principle applies as to the earlier revenge where, hey, you drink this and clearly something was wrong with it. What did they do this time? They don't even know. You better not chance it another time. Our next story is, can't buy around? This is actually the story of a friend of mine from many years ago. He had a group of friends, about eight guys, who would go out to bars and hang out. They would take in in turns to buy a round of drinks for the group. Everyone would usually have a beer, so there was never much issue. Sometimes not everyone would have one. Some guys would say no thanks every once in a while. But in general, it was always pretty fair. The people who accepted drinks bought drinks back and it stayed fairly even over the years. Not one guy though. You know the one. Everyone has met this person at some stage. Anytime he was offered a drink, he always accepted. Never said no thanks. In fact, he was usually the first to put in his order. But guess what? He absolutely never, ever, ever bought any drinks back for anyone else. I always wonder, do these people think no one else notices? Or they just don't care? This guy had a good job, owned his own house in a very nice area, no kids. He was very well off. No reason not to pay other than being a cheap jerk. I actually met this guy a couple of times, once when I'd organized a charity quiz night at a local club collecting for cancer research. He arrived with my friend. I met them at the door where I was collecting the 5 euro entrance fee. When my friend waved at me, Mr. Cheapskate tried to slip past me without paying. My friend loudly called him back and told him he forgot to pay. Luckily, the public shame of trying to steal entrance to a crappy local charity quiz was enough to make him come back and pay up. So yeah, this story made a lot of sense when I heard it. Now, the smart thing to do would be to just stop offering him drinks on nights out, right? Or even smarter, stop inviting him? Well, we come from one of those places where people really don't like confrontation, and they'd all been friends since school. So this group of guys decided to instead be quietly irritated, but continue to get him drinks if he spoke up that he wanted one. However, one particularly long night out, when everyone had already bought at least one to two rounds each, except of course for Mr. Cheapskate, my friend was taking orders for his round. He happily accepted everyone's order and went up to the bar. He came back and handed out beer after beer around the table, but when it came to Mr. Cheapskate very last, he loudly set down a glass of apple juice on the table with a bendy straw. Mr. Cheapskate confusedly asked, where's my beer? Friend staring daggers at him says loudly in front of the whole group, can't buy a round? Can't have a real drink. I wish I could say the guy suddenly started buying all his rounds, but sadly not. But he never spoke up again when it was my friend's round. I think at some point, if everybody's realizing that one of the friends is a total mooch, should they not just keep doing this behavior until he finally does start participating in buying the rounds? Especially if he's not in a financial position where, like, he wouldn't be able to otherwise. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another awesome revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.